obviously I saw an entirely different side of Jack Lemmon than anyone else ever did uh, because he was my father and because I was the product of a divorced household. I think that he realized uh, the disparity that divorce uh, caused in our relationship and he wanted very much to heal that wound. In order to remedy the rift that divorce caused, he chose to take me on wonderful trips and they, once a year we would go to magical places uh, for a week or two. Uh, it started with fly fishing in Alaska, of course. Fly fishing with Jack Lemmon is not fly fishing with Jack Lemmon, it's everybody else fly fishing while Jack Lemmon falls in the stream or gets chased by bears. It was truly magical to be around Jack Lemmon. He was a human leprechaun. No matter what he was doing, where he was doing it, uh, no matter what he was falling into or, you know, or trying to dodge, uh, he was just so much fun in such a unique and heavenly way, for lack of any better term I can think of, to be around. Jack was down to earth in terms of social behavior, but he was still a very complex guy. Just one word keeps popping back when I think of Jack, you know, even before dependable, uh, and that's delightful. He just was good company. And he really was a living example for me that there is grace associated with, as Woody Allen said, showing up. And 90% of life is showing up. And Jack continued to show up to the people in his life, and as far as I could tell, certainly to his work and his desire to do good work and um, his desire to play good golf. Now, of course, playing golf with Jack Lemmon is, is not playing golf. It's everybody else playing golf while Jack Lennon hangs over 100-foot cliffs trying to, you know, dig his ball out of the ice plant while Clint Eastwood's holding him by the belt to keep him from doing a plunge into the Pacific. And I told Jack, Jack, you don't need to hit that shot. He said, now nah, we'll give it a shot. So as Jack started to creep over the edge, Clint Eastwood reached behind him and said, don't worry about it, I got him. And he grabbed his belt. I thought, oh good, now two of the great American acting icons are going to go over the cliff. So I reached and grabbed Clint's belt, Norman grabbed my belt, and Greg Norman's caddy, Pete Bender, grabbed Greg's belt. All connected to Jack Lemmon as he is doing his best to extricate this golf ball from this ice plant. And lo and behold, this thing popped out back into the fairway. Well, he was high-fiving everybody. We had a blast. We laughed at each other. We were just... It, cameras were popping everywhere. It was fantastic. Well, Jack gets to his ball, probably now 40 or 50 yards from the green, asked his caddy what kind of shot he wanted to play, and the caddy said, well, just hit a low skipping wedge in there. And Jack said, I'm going to knock it in the hole. And, well, he made a mighty swing at that wedge and shanked the ball right back into the ocean. The characters that Pop would play, for instance, you know, he'd, in, in the out-of-towners, he'd win finally against New York. Uh, against all odds, only to be hijacked to Cuba on his way back home to Ohio. This wasn't just on screen. Things like this happened to him off screen, and they would happen to me too. And when the two of us got together, they would happen double fold. And that's why when, you know, I'd hear people looking at the stuff he did on screen and say, oh, isn't that crazy? You know, how could that ever happen to anybody? I, I was always astounded and wanted to say, what are you kidding me? It happens to us all the time. Uh, it's the Lemon Legacy.